Hello friends, Lightsider here. And today I'll be having a brief discussion on the new Dark Moon cards that became available last night at 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and their uses for protection paladins. So this video is more of an overview of the three trinkets that we would use and in the future I'll upload another video looking at the empirical use of the trinkets in Phase 3 content. So three of the trinkets that are available are relevant for protection paladins. Dark Moon Card Crusade, Dark Moon Card Vengeance, and Dark Moon Card Madness. You can get these decks by combining the relevant ace through eight cards to form a quest item that can be redeemed while the Dark Moon Fair is active once a month. Aces drop from the last bosses of level 70 dungeons, so think Steam Vaults, All of the Tempest Keep 5 Mans, Shadow Labyrinth, and Shattered Halls on normal. And then they can drop from every single heroic, the last boss of every single heroic dungeon. Cards 1 through 4 are world drops from lesser mobs and up to elites, and I believe cards 5 through 8 only drop from elites that are closer to level 70, such as Raid Trash. First, I'd like to take a look at Dark Moon Madness, as it is the weakest of the cards that we would use as a protection paladin. Madness is really a glorified stamina trinket, and the tooltip reads each time you land a killing blow on an enemy that yields experience or honor, you gain the power of madness. So, this would be a gain of 6 stamina when you're looking at previous stamina trinkets that have been available. It will only really be used on occasions where you'd want to run double stamina trinkets. As the equip is non-existent, the equip effect is non-existent on single target boss fights, and it's going to be unreliable during AoE since you need the killing blow. Not to mention the possible buffs you can get are completely random and mostly useless. So some of the buffs that Paladins can obtain, Delusion, Delusional, which is 70 attack power, Dementia, which every 5 seconds either gives you plus or minus 5 damage, 5% 5 damage or healing, Kleptomaniac, or Kleptomania, which is 35 agility, Megalomania, which is 41 damage or healing, so that would be spell power, 35, uh, Narcissism, which is 35 intellect, or Sociopath, which is 35 Strength. So as you can see, these effects aren't really going to do much for a prop paladin, and they're going to be completely random, so you can't really rely upon them. So moving on to Dark Moon Vengeance, it's a lot more appetizing for a stamina trinket when comparing it to Madness or the other stamina trinkets that have already been available in the game. It also has 51 stamina, but has a built-in threat component that while small is better than nothing. And the equip tooltip reads, you have a 10% chance when hit by an attack or harmful spell to deal 95 to 115 holy damage to your attacker. So this uh, holy damage that occurs can crit, and it is also obviously affected by our threat modifier from Righteous Fury. So it's, it's a lot more relevant than previous stamina trinkets have been. And while the tooltip reads that you can, it can proc off getting hit, it can also proc when you, when your auto attacks refresh a judgment that you have on the target, such as ju Judgment of Wisdom or Judgment of Light, as demonstrated here. And this trinket is nice as it, allow as it allows us to secure 51 stamina for fights like Illidan or Gertog, Gertog Blood Boil, while adding a little threat to the fight. Early logs from an Illidan kill using this trinket show about an overall 11 threat per second increase from using the trinket. And that number would most likely be like uh, would most likely be higher if the uptime of Illidan was higher. So the gain is quite minimal, and depending on your server, the trinket could cost you upwards of 5k. So anytime you'd already be using a stamina trinket, this trinket is going to increase your threat by a minor amount, but it is not a huge game-changing trinket by any means, as some people have uh, thought previously. And moving on, the Dark Moon Card Crusade, which is the last card of interest for prop pallies. This trinket is essentially a poor man's mark of the champion with attack power and five less spell power and it works on anything instead of just working on demons or undead mobs. The downside is that it needs to ramp up. The tooltip reads each time you deal melee or range damage to an opponent you gain six attack power for the next 10 seconds stacking up to 20 times. And each time you land a harmful spell on an opponent you gain eight spell power for the next 10 seconds stacking up to 10 times. 
So one's fully stacked, that is 80 spell power and 120 attack power, if both are stacked. Icon and Dark Iron Smoking Pipe average out to 68.83 spell power on a given fight, so once fully ramped, this trinket surpasses it by around 11 more spell power with the addition of the attack power that the trinket provides. And while this trinket lacks the burst threat that Icon provides for longer fights, it will be providing more spell power on average. So how does Crusade ramp up? You gain a stack every time you land a harmful spell on an enemy, as the tooltip reads. So when you cast Consecration on one mob, it will apply one stack. But if you cast Consecration and the initial tick hits 10 mobs, you will instantly be at 10 stacks and so forth. Therefore, you'll be at 80 spell power. For single target, it will again gain a stack for initial ticks of Consecration. It will gain a stack for casting Judgment. It will gain a stack for refreshing Judgment of Wisdom, Light, or or Judgment of the Crusader, so long as they belong to you and you're refreshing them. So that, that is basically every auto attack. If you have a Judgment on the target that you're refreshing, you're also either refreshing your, your uh, 10 stacks or you're applying a new stack. It will gain a stack on Exorcism casts. It will gain a stack for every mob hit by your Holy Wrath. It will gain a stack on successful Hodge casts. So it would be interesting if you could ramp it up on bosses using Hodge, but if the target is immune to Hodge, it will not count as a stack. And then it will also gain a stack on Turn Undead, not that you would really be using that at all. And while, most, while you're most likely not using Seal of Vengeance in 2022, it will gain a stack on DOT applications of Seal of Vengeance. So this trinket will be strong in AoE pulls or on single target fights whenever you can keep the stacks ramped up. It surpasses Icon and Dark Iron Smoking Pipe on average, on the average spell power gained, but of course you lose burst threat that these unused trinkets provide, and you also lose the extra spell power afforded by these trinkets during your wings window. But on average you'll gain more spell power over the length of a fight by using Dark Moon Card Crusade. That being said, in terms of average spell power gain for a trinket slot, it is only surpassed by Mark of the Champion, assuming you're fighting an undead or demon fight, and Eye of Magdaradon and or Tome of Fire Redemption when you're assuming that you have the best RNG possible on the uptime of either of those trinkets. In closing, the gains from these DMC trinkets are going to be somewhat minuscule. For me, Madness hardly justifies the price. Vengeance looks good on paper when you could be using a stamina trinket anyway, and Crusade looks quite appetizing if you do not have access to a Mark of the Champion or Guild and Axe runs. You will have to factor in how much these small gains are worth to you, and whether you want to pay the price of obtaining these cards. Prior to the first Dark Moon Fair that came out in Phase 3, I paid around 5.2k gold for the deck that makes Vengeance, 3.7k for the deck that makes Crusade, and 1k for the deck that creates Madness. These prices will also be higher, but for each deck I was able to get one of the rarer cards that drops um, between 1 and 4 from farming mobs in the open world. And these cards are often the priciest as they're the, the hardest to farm, which reduced the overall cost of the decks that I paid. So you'll have to, to weigh whether or not you're interested in pursuing these decks for the, the gains that they provide. Like I said, I, I hope this video helped you understand what these Dark Moon cards offer the Protection Paladin. And in the future, I'll upload a part two of this video that shows more empirical use cases of the trinkets in Phase 3 content. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.